we're at Design School with BMXer Mike Hucker-Clark as we learn the precision required to make dirt jumps. BMXers that ride dirt, I mean, we're kind of weird people. Like we spend countless hours and days just digging. I mean, I wouldn't change it for the world. This is what I've done my whole life, and this is all I want to do. So I grew up always making little tiny dirt jumps in my backyard, and then for my 12th birthday, I got a BMX bike, like a good one. And I went to this place called Sheep Hills. There was probably 50 dudes there, all different ages, from kids younger than me to probably 40, 50 year old guys, just riding bikes, having so much fun. And at that point, I was like, man, this is what I want to do. I never thought I'd actually be doing it still to this day. It's pretty wild, like, I've ridden trails and dirt jumps all around the world, and everywhere you go, the dirt's totally different. And all dirt forms differently, and you really have to, like, understand how soil works and top layers of dirt, opposed to, like, rocky dirt to sandy dirt. Like, there's so many different variables that go into it. It's really crazy how you really do know how to work with the dirt. There's nothing like jumping dirt jumps, like something you can actually build yourself and fine tune every day if you want and change it any day. So I always just had this deep passion for dirt jumps and trails. My love is still like just as big as it's ever been for dirt. My team manager came up to me one day and he was like, hey, we have this dirt lab and it hasn't really been touched for a long time. You should come build whatever you want. Uh, that's every BMXer's dream is to have private land. But not only that, to have all the equipment to do it. I um, mean, tractors, hoses, shovels, picks, you name it. They have everything here. And here I had the opportunity to kind of shape these and build them exactly how I wanted. So I came and did a walkthrough and had a general idea of what I wanted to build. And uh, they're honestly, just like building any trails, there's trial and error. You never get it right the first time. I mean, there's so many things that go into it to making these jumps perfect. Weather has a big part of it. The moisture in the dirt, you can't have it dry because then it doesn't stick together. You don't want it too wet because then it's gonna fall apart and it's never gonna dry. The dirt here isn't too rocky and it's actually really awesome. It's sandy, once you water it, pack it in, when it dries, it turns into concrete basically and it's amazing. It's scary to fall on, but it's great dirt to build with. We started just piling dirt, piling dirt, and uh, we built like five jumps before we even jumped them. That's not how you build trails traditionally. Usually you build one jump, jump it, dial it in, make sure it's perfect, and then you go on with the next. But we were on a limited amount of time here because we don't get much rain here. So I piled all the jumps and uh, just took a little bit of fine tuning, but they came out better than I ever imagined. I've always been a fan of large jumps. I like bigger jumps way better than smaller jumps. It's always been that way for me. There's just something about just floating across the air. There's nothing like it. And I wanted to build large jumps on a scale that is so big to where it's gonna scare the living heck out of you. Like I wanted people to come here, look at these jumps and be terrified. But yeah, at the same time, super simple to get through, super fun, so you're comfortable and you can do tricks and you can flow and go as high as you want and not worry about clearing it. You know you're getting over it. And that's exactly what me and my friends created right here in the background. I keep wanting to flip this one, but I feel like I'm not getting enough speed. There's a lot of factors that go into what's an easy jump and what's a hard jump. To some people, some jumps might be easier than others, and other people, some jumps might be harder than it is for others. What I wanted was jumps that you never had to worry about clearing it. You know when you're going off the jump, you're gonna land on the land and you're not gonna come up short, and you're not gonna land flat, like to where you're actually gonna clear it and catch landing. And um, that gives you a lot of room to actually pull back, go higher, and do big tricks. So that was my main focus, was have jumps that are so intimidating, you're gonna be terrified, but yet super simple. It was a bit of a challenge, but it really worked out better than I could have ever imagined. Up until the first jam, there's only about four or five of us max that had even jumped these, and we loved them, and it took a lot of fine tuning to get them to that point. And I was so nervous at the first jam because I was like, man, I hope people like the jumps. And everybody after their first one just came back with the biggest smile ever. And like that was more worth it than 
riding it myself, like just seeing the joy it brought to everybody. That's, that's what it's all about.